Hey guys, welcome back to episode 3 of Coyote Hunting 101 here at Outdoors Anonymous. Today we're going to go over how to e-scout just using Google Maps and the internet and look for land where you could potentially go and set up a coyote stand and call out some coyotes and hopefully be able to get some. For today's episode, I thought it would be a lot better if there was, you know, a lot of visuals. So what I did was I just made some slideshow, like a slideshow presentation just on Microsoft PowerPoint, which I absolutely suck at. So uh, cut me some slack, but we're going to get started right away. But before we get started here, if you guys haven't seen episode one and two, check those out. They're going to be linked in the description below. Episode one, we went over coyote gear. Episode two, we went over coyote calling uh, techniques, sequences, and coyote calling tips and today we're going to go over stand placement how to play the wind how to place the stand how to look for land um, depending on the wind and where to place your stand on that land to be able to successfully uh, call coyotes out properly and how to not get busted by the coyotes by not playing the wind properly depending on the terrain that you're hunting on so without further ado let's get the slideshow presentation started and i'll see you guys in a bit let's go all right guys so we're gonna get going here on how to scout for hunting areas to be able to hunt some coyotes so we're gonna go over private land and public land today and then i'm gonna use screenshots from google maps um, just outlining a couple different uh, scenarios both on public and private land um, of areas that i typically would hunt in and hopefully it would cover you know the general types of areas that you guys might have there where you are as well um, you're gonna have to forgive my PowerPoint skills here. I am not an expert whatsoever at PowerPoint, but uh, I used a template here and I did my best. So let's get going. Uh, part number one is private land. So first and foremost, let's touch on the habitat and behavior of a coyote. Um, what do all animals need uh, in order to survive and thrive in a, any given area? No matter what type of animal, uh, they need food, water, and shelter. So if we can find those three things, no matter what type of game animal you're looking for, they're likely to be in that specific area. Um, now coyotes, they like to be in open fields, um, but then they, they make their dens in you know some, some thicker bush. So if you can find a place where there's an open field and then some thick bush, and then maybe a creek or a river or some marsh or something like that for their water source, that's going to be prime habitat for coyotes. Why? Because um, they'll have all types of prey animals there that they eat, whether it's rabbits, small birds, um, whatever else that, uh, that coyotes can feed on. They're pretty opportunistic feeders, so they'll feed on just about anything. So especially on private land where there's livestock, they'll be attracted to that livestock in the farmer's field and they'll typically hang that's why they like to hang around uh, farmland because of farmers livestock and if there's a river or creek or marshes nearby and some heavy wooded areas um, like in spots of that field as you guys can see on the map here that would be prime habitat for coyotes so the question is why private land well, generally speaking, it's way easier to obtain permission to hunt private land if you're telling the, the landowner that you're hunting coyotes because farmers and ranchers, they view coyotes as pests uh, to their field and their livestock. So they hate coyotes for the most part. So it's a lot easier to obtain permission from farmers to hunt coyotes on their land compared to say deer. If, uh, if, you were, if you were asking the same farmer to hunt deer on their land, they'd probably say no, but they'd say yes to coyotes. Um, also, most farm and ranch fields have the proper habitat that the coyote need. As I mentioned earlier, they'll have a uh, food source, they'll have the field, they'll have shelter, and they'll usually have some sort of water source nearby as well, as you guys can see on the map here. So just a closer look at the map here, uh, so we can see the habitat requirements. Uh, are being met. Um, I drew a measuring line across the horizontal of the field there that you can see is about 350 meters. Okay, <clears throat> you have a creek running along the north and the east side 
of the field that we're looking at right there where the measuring line is okay so you've got a water source you can see that there's thick bush and cover along that along the edges of the field and around the creek as well um, and then of course you have the open field there that's uh, that's the farmer's field uh, for their crops and whatnot so this habitat contains rabbits uh, woodpeckers uh, I think there's grouse in here as well and other small birds and uh, whatever other prey species that the coyote would be able to go after so this is a really good example of a good uh, private land habitat that you might be able to set up and hunt some coyotes so on the next slide uh, we're going to go over stand placement and how to play the wind direction all right so playing the wind is really important because canine nose is really really strong they have a really strong sense of smell so it's really important that we play the wind here um, i'm going to use for example on this particular field um, that there is a north wind okay so as you can see across the field we measured 350 meters so you can see from where our stand placement is compared to the x which is where we would be placing the decoy that decoy is about uh, 100 meters away from our stand 80 to 100 meters away from our stand there um, we've got a north wind so we're not it's not exactly in our face it's sort of diagonal to our face okay so it's a bit of a crosswind um, the nice thing about that is a general rule of thumb is that when a coyote hears something they'll usually almost always try to get downwind of what they heard or what they think they saw so you can see here the arrow saying the coyote direction say for example to the northeast of the field which is pretty much uh north north east northeast of where our stand is say the coyotes are are going to be in that uh, wooded area there close to the creek we can expect them to come and move southwest out of the tree line moving in a southwest direction onto the field to try to catch wind which is coming from the north so they'll try to get south of where they think they heard the sound so we can expect them to come out pretty much right in front of us if we're on that stand and we're looking straight across the field from that stand they they should come out basically right in front of us or a little bit to our right side if we're facing across the field that's the direction that we can expect them to be coming out from in order for them to get downwind of the decoy and where the sound is coming from okay so if you guys can see there there's a north wind so it's going to be blowing our scent and the decoy scent uh, to the south okay so the coyotes are going to be coming from northwest and they'll try to get south of that sound that they heard and they're going to try to confirm with their nose and eyes what their ears heard so we can expect them to come out of that area and then they'll be right in our shooting lane all right well that covers it for private land section here uh it's just gonna be really really quick basic tutorial right so i hope that that's kind of making sense so far and that it's answering some of your guys's questions on you know how to find proper land to be able to hunt coyotes if you guys have any other questions or any other scenarios or anything like that that you guys would like me to talk about put them in the comment section below and I'll try to get to your comments as best as I can. Um, if it's something that's really, really popular, uh, I'm, I might just make another video to answer that as well. So let me know what you guys think in the comments below so far. And uh, we're going to move on now to public land. So we're going to do a couple different scenarios of public land here. The first scenario is going to be open areas. All right. So. I put a pretty zoomed out view of this entire area here. This is uh, an area that I hunt frequently around here. Um, I put that measuring 
the measuring stick there, as you can see, just as a sort of a guideline so you guys can see how sort of, how kind of big this area is here, right? Uh, so from one point to the other point on that measuring, on the ruler there, you can see it's about 350 meters. Um, does this have the habitat requirements of a coyote? Yes, it does. So it's got a water source. It's got the Assiniboine River right up there. It's got a lot of thick bush, a lot of cover. Um, as you guys can see, lots of different spots of wooded areas there. Those are really thick bush. If you've been in this area, that those wooded areas are pretty thick bush. Um, this area is also, I call it hill country. Here in the prairies, we don't have that many hills uh, in Manitoba, but this part of Manitoba is very hilly. And that's why I enjoy being out in, uh, in this part of the, uh, of, of the land here. Um, so hills can provide good vantage points, not just for you, um, but also for like predators like coyotes and whatnot. They like to get up high on a good vantage point and be able to scan for prey as well. So that'll work to your advantage. Now, speaking of vantage point, never ever sit right at the top of a hill or a high area where you're going to be skylined. Never be skylined because they'll be able to see you. If they can't smell you, they'll, they'll be able to see you. They've got good eyesight as well. So do not skyline yourself. Don't sit right at the top of the hill. Okay, you will always want to have a good backdrop um, behind you when you're hunting coyotes. So whether that's bush or you can, if you sit in the middle of the hill or halfway up the hill, right, then that should be okay as well, as long as you're also camouflaged with your backdrop there. Okay, um, now on the top right of the photo, you guys can see some fields. So there's uh, there's farm fields there, there's uh, corn, uh, whatever else, and there's also cattle ranches, okay? So there's nearby cattle ranches in this area as well. So there, not only is there livestock, there's open field, there's water, there's hills, there's a lot of thick bush uh, that they can use for shelter as well. Very, very good habitat that can house a lot of coyotes. Now, when I was hunting deer here in this area last season, I've seen tons and tons of coyotes, uh, coyote tracks and coyote signs, coyote scat, like all over the place. It's insane. And coming into the area uh, just before sunrise, you'll hear coyotes howling uh, in the dark there as well. So lots of coyotes in this area because it's really good habitat for them. All right, so we'll take a closer look now. On the next slide, we'll, we're gonna go over uh, where we're placing our stand and um, scenario on wind direction. All right, so you guys can see on this slide here, we've got a west wind. We've got our stand placed on a small hill with a tree line as our backdrop. So we're camouflaged in there, okay? Uh, the red X, that's where we're placing the decoy, so it's on the bottom of the hill, sort of in a bit of an open area, and the decoy st uh, placed at about, uh, in this scenario, about 130 meters away from our stand. Now, because we have a west wind, okay, so we're completely crosswind over here. Um, like I said earlier, coyotes are always, almost always going to be trying to get downwind of the sound that they hear. So, the top left arrow of the coyote direction is where they may be coming from if they're coming from that, from the top, uh, sorry, from the northwest side there. They're gonna try to circle around and try to come out uh, downwind or to the east of where our decoy is placed. So they can come out from that direction there and also they can come from the northeast direction from where our stand is. So northeast of where our stand is, the arrow on the right side there on the top right of the picture, um, they can also come out from that way and just head straight down to try to get east of where that decoy is. So here, because we've got a crosswind, now all of a sudden we've got a couple different directions where coyotes may come out from, uh, from their thick cover. 
and out onto the open field. Now, as you guys can see here, if they come out from that northeast uh, direction there, we've got about 400 from that tree line, from the closest tree line to our stand that they may come out from on that direction is gonna be about 350 to 400 meters. But we can probably be able to get them, uh, to call them in closer because the way our stand is positioned here um, and because of the, the way that the terrain is there, they're most likely not gonna catch our scent until they're a lot closer than 400 meters. So you can shoot them at 400 meters or you can wait for them to get closer. If they come now from the northwest direction of our stand, well, we'll be able to get them really, really close, like within 200, within 100 to 200 meters uh, and be able to get a shot within that distance if they come out from that northwest direction arrow there. All right, moving on to example number two on public land. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about thick bush with small open areas or just a small you know forest road trail or in this case we're talking about a power line trail um, you guys can see here in this slide it's mostly thick bush those are a lot of thick pines over there now that trail that you guys see where that's measured 52 meters across that is a power line trail or a hydro line trail um so that's why it's clear cut down there so that is that right there any animal that wants to get from one side to the other has to cross that trail so that is the positive side of this area is because if the, anybody that wants to come across that has to cross that trail and if we place our stand properly we'll be able to see them crossing that trail so you guys can see here as well on the bottom right of the slide you guys can see some marsh areas so there's the water source there um, this area will hold prey species such as rabbit squirrel there's beavers in the marshes here uh, grouse other small birds uh, all kinds of different things that a coyote can can prey on um, like I mentioned earlier, tons of thick bush. There's a small open area to the west of where I put the, the ruler, measuring ruler there. Um, and then we have the power line trail coming from north to south. All right, so example two, 2.1. Um, again, we have to play the wind. So in this scenario, there is a northeast wind. So the way we're placing our stand and our decoy in this scenario, we basically have a headwind. So any coyote is going to come from the east of our stand. Okay, so they can eat, they're most likely going to come from southeast of our stand. Okay, because they're going to try to cut across that trail, the power line trail there, and try to get southwest of the decoy sound so in order to get southwest of that sound they have to come out into that power line trail from the southeast area or from the east area from where our stand is so we can expect if we're if we see our stand right there in the yellow and we are looking across to the east we can expect them to come out from southeast of us okay so we got to get ready to be able to uh, shoot to the southeast of us that is our firing lane now they could potentially also come from uh, from above us as well from the north from either the northeast or the northwest and try to just walk down south on that power line trail but they're more likely going to come from that southeast direction um, and then just try to come across of that power line trail so this is a pretty pretty good place to put up our stand we've got pretty much a face wind here at this stand and then but the only difference is our shooting lane is basically just 
straight across, like north and south, just along this trail. Okay, that's our shooting lane right there. So we've got about, say here, because it's 50 meters just across the trail, 50, 100. So they'll probably come out anywhere between 100 to 400 meters down that trail and start coming up closer to where our stand is and the decoy is to try to confirm uh, with their eyes and their nose uh, what their ears heard. All right, and example 2.2. So same, same area, same hydro line trail, okay? But this time we've got a north wind. So this is actually pretty good for us because if we have a north wind, we're going to place our stand now so that it's facing up and we're still facing our face to the wind. So we've still got a face wind here. Our decoy is between us and where the wind is coming from. Okay, so now you can see here that any coyote can come from either side of the trail onto the trail and try to get downwind of where they're hearing that sound from. And this is a really ideal scenario because you can basically funnel them in to this little bottleneck that we have with this power line trail and they can come from either side. They can act, actually, in this scenario, they might even come from southwest and southeast of us as well. But chances of that is lower because we're, the, the wind is blowing from the north. So if there's coyotes to the south of us, they'll most likely catch our scent already and they won't come out from the south. So they're more likely to come out from the northwest and the northeast direction onto the trail and try to confirm with their eyes and their nose um, what their ears heard from where our decoy is placed there on the X. Okay, so those are a couple different scenarios there. I hope it's making sense so far for you guys. Um, so we've covered private land there, a couple different scenarios on public land, whether it's an open area or more of an enclosed area like this where there's more thick bush, but just a small trail or a small open area. The idea is always the same, and we're going to go over the summary here on the next slide. All right, guys, now to summarize and recap everything here, um, when you're scouting for coyote hunting areas, the most important thing is you're going to have to find land where there's going to actually be coyotes in there. So you have to find their suitable habitat. That means finding a piece of land where there's shelter, there's water, and there's a food source. So we went over different examples of that on about private land and public land earlier in the slides. Um, number two is when you're setting up your stand, always keep in mind the wind direction of that day and always play the wind. You want the wind either in your face or at some sort of slight crosswind as you guys saw from the previous examples, okay? Um, another important part is the time of day to hunt coyotes. So coyote behavior from the first slide there, as you saw, they're usually asleep during the daytime and they hunt uh, at nighttime. Um, so they're most active, um, in the nighttime or just on that evening or very early morning. So my coyote hunts, I've had the most success uh, going in the very, very early morning, like pretty much right before or right at, sun, right at sunrise. Um, but that's because I'm a morning hunter and I don't really hunt the evening anyways. So who knows, maybe I could have better success in the evening, but I usually go in the very early morning and that's where I found my success. Uh, they might depend also on the area that you're at. It might be different where you're at. But generally speaking, in midday, coyote action is usually pretty, pretty dead. So either early morning or right at evening. Or if you guys can hunt at night in your area, that's also a really popular thing that people do. Um, they get night optics and everything else, and they hunt coyotes at night. Here where I am in Manitoba, we cannot hunt at night, so we can only shoot half an hour. We can only discharge firearms half an hour before sunrise and half an hour after sunset. So we cannot do night hunting here. Otherwise, 
I would probably go out at nighttime uh, to hunt some coyotes. But uh, we got to make do with what we got. And uh, yeah, that's it. Um, length at each stand. I mentioned this in the previous video of this series. Um, you're going to want to only stay maximum of 20 to 30 minutes on each stand. So when you guys go out, it's a good idea to have, you know, a, maybe three to five different stands that you want to hit on that day and stay 20 to 30 minutes on each stand. If there's no action on one, move on to the next. Uh, if you get one on the first stand, I would probably just move on to the second stand pretty much right away because you will most likely not be able to call any other coyotes back after you've already shot one there unless you get multiples on the same set. Okay, so I hope that this video was uh, valuable to you guys and you guys took a little bit of value from it. If you did, please drop a thumbs up and uh, leave me some comments down below. Let me know what you thought of this video. Again, this is uh, episode number three of Coyote Hunting 101 for absolute beginners that wanna get started in coyote hunting. So I hope you guys liked the video. If you haven't seen the first couple of episodes, check out the playlist link and the other video, uh, recommended video links in the description below. And uh, if you haven't already, and you like my videos, if you enjoy my content, if you haven't done so already, please do subscribe. And uh, we'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.